I'm Alex Shattuck and you're watching Buckingham News. The police commissioner elections are just around the corner and the race is heating up. We contacted the candidates to see why they should have your vote. Maria Brito Barrero has the story. May the 5th will be your chance to have your say in who becomes the next Thames Valley Police and Crime Commissioner. The new commissioner will stay in office for four years, starting from the 12th of May until May 2020. Representing his Conservative Party, Anthony Stansfeld, the current commissioner, has announced he is standing for re-election. The Labour Party candidate, Letitia Carter, is the current district councillor for West Oxfordshire. John Housen, representing the Liberal Democrats, is the county councillor for Oxfordshire, and Lee Trainer is standing as a UKIP candidate. The four candidates went head-to-head -head recently on a BBC debate. What I would want is a complete briefing from the Chief Constable on um, what their operational priorities are, because I am getting, as you would expect during an election campaign, uh, a series of uh, comments and requests from a whole range of different groups who think that they are uh, not being treated as well as they could be. Unfortunately, we were unable to interview the rest of the candidates by the time of broadcast. The Police and Crime Commissioner of the Thames Valley Police plays an extremely important role in the safety of the residents. The Commissioner sets the strategic direction of the police force to lower crime rates and ensure public value for money. However, not all shared this enthusiasm over the upcoming election. The Facebook page Buckingham What Matters to You saw a pour of outrage over the need for political alignment of the police force. So don't forget to head to your local polling station on May the 5th to also have your say in who becomes the Thames Valley's next police commissioner. This is Maria Brito Barreiro for Buckingham News. Buckingham has finally decided who will get £9,500 of local taxpayers' money to benefit the community. The council's Buckingham Decide scheme results are out and Federica Battiato went to find out more. Buckingham Decides is a plan that gives the people of Buckingham a voice to tell the council where they want their money to be spent. Votes were collated online and in traditional ballot boxes placed around Buckingham. Five local organisations were awarded a share of the £9,500 found. The most voted organisations, Men in Sheds Buckingham and the Citizen Advice Bureau Home Visiting Service, will both receive £3,000. How will you spend the £3,000 you won? Because um, Buckingham and the surrounding area is quite rural, part of this money we use to help funding the home visiting team because clearly it's quite expensive to keep that going, paying for petrol and things to people to get out there. Uh, so the £3,000 is a bit of a godsend in that respect. The small financial boost could make a big difference to the chosen organisations. In kitting out this workshop, um, it's, it was a storage room for the pub. Um, but as you can see, we've made a start on lining it out and uh, we will be buying uh, machines so that we can do a vast array of woodworking projects. Paul Hudson, the Localities and Communities Manager at Buckinghamshire County Council, said we expected a significant number of local people to vote. We don't have immediate plans for another project, but we are looking for ways to continue to involve residents in decision making. Buckingham Decides was a success and it shows that once again Buckingham residents continue to care about their community. This is Federica Battiato for Buckingham News. On Monday, the second talk at Ondarchi Hall was held from the Fireside series. Professor John Clark spoke on Buckingham, capital of the county. We sent Sophia Bunker to learn the history of our town. John Clark is a professor of history at the University of Buckingham and his family has lived in the area for generations and the community has been hugely grateful for his work on the history of Buckingham. My mother's family has largely come from the Buckingham area going back to the middle of the 19th century. The talk covered the story of Buckingham through the ages, mentioning the military, economic and political significance of its history. Professor Clark focused on the complex relationship the town has had with Stowe. Professor Clark guided us through the history of Buckingham, covering parts of its wonderful history from the first settlers through to modern times sharing some historical anecdotes, including the myth of St. Rumbold of Buckingham, who lived here for only three days but spoke fluent Latin at birth. I think that the, the sense of place uh, in local history is terribly important to an understanding of the, the nature of the place. Uh, and as people move around and people become less associated with places than they perhaps were in the past, 
um, actually to provide that sense of belonging and identity uh, is even more important now. The talk enhanced our knowledge of the small town of Buckingham and has left us wanting to know more. This is Severe Bunker reporting for Buckingham News. In other news, hundreds of students flooded the Chandos Road building to meet prospective employers and search out internships at the university's careers fair last week. Large graduate employers such as Soundhunter, FDM, Sykes & Co and PwC were in attendance, amongst many others. A local debate ahead of the EU referendum known colloquially as Brexit will be held in Buckingham on the 2nd of June at an as yet undisclosed location. MP for Buckingham, John Burko, who is also Speaker of the House of Commons, will host the event. Constituency residents are encouraged to apply for tickets online. The University's Modern Foreign Language Department held their annual cheese and wine tasting event yesterday. The event was held in the Channers Road building, so we sent Yuan Yuan to try out what was on offer. The aroma of fresh cheese and delicious wine filled the Channels building at the Modern Foreign Languages Department, hosted a wine and cheese tasting night for everyone to attend it. Cheese and wine have been served together for generations in Europe, with the pastime as a long-held tradition in France. To drink wine while eating food is known to enhance the dining experience. And yes, so we would love to be able to, to, to call this event again in the future and maybe have different wines, different cheese, or try different parts of the Spanish, you know, of French uh, gastronomy. Why not? The event itself was free and gave students and lecturers a lack of chance to meet new people over the delicious array of cheese and wine. The attendees of the event have a lovely evening as they learn how to pair their wines and cheese together. This is Yuan Yuan for Buckingham News. Vice Chancellor Sir Anthony Selden has announced plans to beautify the university. He wants to branch out into Bicester and enrol more students as part of his 10 year plan for the university. Mina Omagomi has the story. Ugly buildings, an improved campus aesthetic, and more students are all part of the Vice Chancellor's plans to improve the statue of the UK's only private university here in Buckingham. A walkway around the river, the Vincent Centre on the site of Santander, and general beautifying of the campus are key ideas in the Vice Chancellor's plans. The 10 year plan will lead up to the 50th anniversary of the University of Buckingham, which is very exciting in 2026. It is work in progress. The university is the town's biggest employer and adds an estimated £70 million to the local economy, something which the Vice-Chancellor sees as key in the strong relationship between the town and the university. And the plan is going to have a clear sense about what the ambition for the university is, and that is to be very much building on the fantastic traditions of this university, which has survived for 40 years. Uh, which is an amazing, stupendous achievement. Having only been in post for seven months, Sir Anthony's long-term plans are already taking shape. This is Mina Omagomi, Buckingham News. Medical and economic students are likely to be the highest earners within 10 years of graduation, according to latest research. While the university in which you study has also been found to impact earnings. Laura Okitu went to find out more. You are better off studying medicine, engineering or economics if you want to earn a big salary. According to a report by the Institute of Physical Studies, the study also showed that graduates are much more likely to earn more than non-graduate. Medicine proved to have the highest earning graduates within 10 years, with a median wage of £55,000 for male graduates and £45,000 for female graduate. Economics came in second, with a mean wage of £42,000 for men and £38,200 for women. Creative arts graduates had the lowest median salaries, with men taking home £17,900 and women earning £14,000. Graduates are much more employable um, in the UK and they earn a premium of at least 10% more than non-graduates in the workplace in the immediate short term. There are lots of benefits of doing uh, a degree rather than not. The gender pay gap is also noticeable in all findings, with male out-earning females in all disciplines except European languages and literature, while the University of Oxford, Cambridge and the London School of Economics were found to produce the highest earners. The important thing to remember is that uh, the earnings that graduates get do rather depend on 
their background, how well they did at school before they went into university, and therefore which university they actually attended. With thriving schools of business and medicine, Buckingham's graduates also stand a great chance of becoming some of the top earners. This is Laura Akuti, Buckingham News. Now over to sports with Zoe Briggs. Thank you, Alex. Monday kicked off the first boxing fitness training session of the term in the Tanmore Mill Exercise Studio. Not only can students sign up to take part, but also local residents interested in boxing. Chris Armand went face to face with the story. Boxing is one of the most beneficial sports for your health. Boxing helps to decrease stress, lower your risk of heart disease, burn off the last of the Christmas flab, and improve your hand-eye coordination. The sessions will teach basic boxing principles such as punching and blocking. As sessions also include physical conditioning, participants must be prepared for a legitimate workout. The students so far are loving it. I mean, uh, from what I've been seeing in the classroom, in full, uh, you know, we had a lot of, uh, even after the taster session, which they told it, we had a lot of application, people wanted to join. So, so yeah, they, they registered very quickly. The sessions run twice a week for an hour and a half on Mondays and Wednesdays. Registration costs 40 pounds for 12 sessions over a six week period. So why don't you come practice your right hook and left jab? You'll never know when it might come in handy. If you're interested in attending these sessions, contact Stephen Ridley at the sports office. This is Chris Armar for Buckingham News. The University of Buckingham's football team kicked off the term with a great start, but sadly their winning streak was cut short after they lost against rivals, the Brackley Old Boys, last week. Here's Cameron Hawtree with the story. After beating Brackley Old Boys in a triumphant 9-1 win two weeks ago, Buckingham couldn't quite maintain the momentum last Wednesday, succumbing to a 4-3 defeat at Brackley's ground, ending their two-match winning streak. Brackley were quick to secure a well-earned first goal within the opening five minutes. Buckingham responded with multiple attacks and soon earned themselves a penalty, which was scored by team captain Toby Akinbai, levelling the score. Buckingham followed this with a powerful second goal, once again scored by Toby Akinbai, and shortly after, a goal from Lolu Anabulu, who scored at 36 minutes, making the score 3-1 to Buckingham at halftime. The halftime break clearly worked wonders for the Brackley Old Boys, as they managed to score two goals within the first 10 minutes of the second half. The game's aggression levels rose continuously, with the teams being locked in at 3-3 right until the last eight minutes. Unfortunately for Buckingham, Brackley scored the final goal, leaving the score at 4-3. Yeah, I think it was a good game. We battled well. The first half was good. But obviously, I think maybe a bit of fatigue going into the play. And um, guys couldn't really carry themselves around that much. But to be fair, I feel we're unlucky, you know, we didn't really deserve to lose the game. But not all hope is lost for the Bucks boys, as today they're playing in the finals of the first division of the North Bucks League against Willen Football Club. This is Cameron Hawtrey for Buckingham News. And now back to Alex in the studio. A beautician and business owner from Buckingham will be running in the London Marathon later this month. Anita Stubbings will be taking part in the race to raise money for wolf hirschhorn syndrome, which can cause growth restrictions, intellectual disability and even seizures. Nora Bachman reports. Anita Stubbings, the owner of Body Matters on Well Street, has come up with a creative approach to raise funds for longtime friend Sarah Fleming and her son, who suffers from wolf hirschhorn syndrome. Tommy, now five years old, was diagnosed with a disorder at seven months of age. The two mothers met at a postnatal group and have been friends ever since. An uh, extremely lovely little boy who's the same age as my little boy. Unfortunately, at seven months, he got diagnosed having a rare syndrome called wolf hirschhorn syndrome. Um, now he's five, he does need constant care, most 24 hours. Um, and their desperate need of uh, some equipment for him, so I was trying to arrange as, as much money as I could. Anita aims to raise enough donations for a thousand pound special stroller for Tommy and proceeds for the Wolf Hirschhorn Syndrome Trust. This is Noor Behman for Buckingham News. Last Wednesday, Barrister John Hatchard hosted a lecture in the Franciscan Building. The lecture was entitled Undermining a Constitution by Constitution Means. We sent Laura Hughes to see what it was all about. The seminar was the first of a series called Comparative Constitutional Law. The series of seminars are to promote and provoke discussion of some issues relating to the development and maintenance of constitutions, constitutionalism and good governance in a range of jurisdictions worldwide. The first lecture by John Hatchard discussed how different constitutional models can be used to increase or decrease presidential power. 
a lot of the Caribbean has um, the, um, the, the Westminster model. And I, I guess it works for, for, for those particularly small jurisdictions because everybody knows one another. Um, and it's quite nice to have a, um, uh, almost an, an independent person as your, your, your head of state. The seminar was not just for students studying law, but also for any students interested in constitutional law issues and challenges. The lecture was focused around how constitutions can be manipulated to control who gets into power and offered a variety of thought-provoking ideas. There's lots of ways in which you can use a constitutional provision to exclude a particular person from elections. And as I mentioned, you can do that if they are um, a non-citizen, and that's where um, Ted Cruz has got a problem in, his, in, the, in the US at the moment, because he was born in Canada. The lecture was mentally stimulating for everybody. Let's hope the next seminar, which is next Wednesday, is just as challenging. This is Laura Hughes for Buckingham News. Italian pasta, Chinese noodles, Indian curry. From the 18th to 24th of April, all these cuisines and more are celebrated during International Dining Week. We sent Owen Hughes to tantalise our taste buds with his favourite international dish. Devised by the humanitarian charity, the Curry Tree Project, International Dining Week is a fun event celebrating the diversity of cuisines available in Britain. That's why I've decided to cook up a classic chicken tikka masala, a very British dish with its own international influences. To follow our recipe, you will need one tin of chopped tomatoes, a tablespoon of tomato puree, 15 grams of butter, 75 millilitres of double cream and 75 millilitres of natural yoghurt, two tablespoons of tikka masala paste, one roughly chopped onion, one de-seeded chopped red pepper, and two cubed chicken breasts. Fry the onions in a pan with some oil and the butter until soft and brown, then add the pepper and tikka masala paste. Next, add the chicken and cook the ingredients together for approximately five minutes. Add the chopped tomatoes, the tomato puree, and 200 milliliters of water. Simmer for 15 minutes, stirring occasionally, before removing from the heat and stirring in the yoghurt and the cream. This simple chicken tikka masala may be just one of many classic British dishes influenced by international cuisine, but it is easily my favourite. Why not give it a try yourself during this International Dining Week? I'm Owen Hughes for Buckingham News. Following the success of last year, Buckingham hosted its fourth annual Spring Fair on Sunday. We'll leave you with a short montage from Scott Stanley and we'll see you next week. The Buckingham Town Council and local residents have come together to promote ideas on environmental issues, sustainability, local produce and crafting in the Catalan areas of Buckingham Town Centre.